what what is stress what is uh, stress distributions and this is kind of related to uh, what we have learned previously uh, we remember like lecture number three we talk about uh, you calculate all the stresses um, so this is if you have this is your ground surface and at any depth you, you can find out the vertical stress and the horizontal stress both total stress and uh, effective stress so that's that's what we have uh, uh, for lecture three and one more time uh, this this only works so up to uh, lecture three uh, what we learned is just up to the conditions of free field so what is free field free field free field means like a pretty much like a, you have nothing there but for what being new now in this lecture seven is you're no longer on a free field not a free field means you could have extra structure so you could be a building you could be a levees you could be a dam so now we have above ground structure so this is uh, above ground structure so now you have an above ground structure or the above ground structure so we call this as a often time we call this as a surcharge so pretty much is like a, is a loading it's a loading uh adding on adding on to the ground so um and the effect of this like uh, above ground loading you affect the stress distributions to your uh, soil along the depth so that's why that's why um, what we focus on now the question is with the above ground uh, structure with the surcharge what has changed instead of the stress along the depth and some reference uh, on this on this uh, lecture is uh, your textbook it talks about it and also uh, I upload other like a reference so if you want to have more in-depth uh, study go ahead to read uh, there's like a like a course notes over there so pretty much this is this is from uh, Uni University of Texas So if you want if you want more in-depth study go ahead and read it it's, it's just got um, the level of difficulties there is just getting to graduate level but you know you have a lot of time if you have a lot, a lot of times get stuck at home now maybe it's a good time to try 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 to read that out uh, the textbook will be a good starting point and um, in practice and um, in um, in the most common reference I put it this way is the uh, Navy uh, design manual 7.01. So this is uh, most uh, common reference in practice. And this is this one is more in depth. If you want to understand all the math behind, you know, go ahead and read the. Uh, uh, the reference from uh, from from UT UT Austin from your University of Texas. Okay, so this this is what we learned. This is what we have been learning. For example, if we want to find out the stress at any point throughout the soil profile. So one more time, uh, for this soil profile, it's a free field conditions because there's nothing about the ground. So it's just, just a soil profile. Uh, we have learned this. Uh, so the vertical stress, for example, if we try to calculate uh, this for this soil profile, do you want to find out the total, find out the total stress at the, at, at the depth of 10 feet? So what we'll be doing is uh, sum, to sum up all the uh, stresses from all different like a soil layers so this is your first soil layers unit weight of soils times 
the thickness. So the thickness is right there. And then pass um, at the second layers of the soil, the unit wage of it, and then times the thickness of that soil layers. And then now you just go up to 10 to 10 feet. So pretty much uh, the thickness we're talking about here is just right there. So here would be uh, two feet because the whole thing is 10 feet. And then like you have eight feet already. So the difference is two feet. So you have the third layer. So this is how to calculate the uh, the total vertical stress. And then the next thing, you calculate the pore pressure too. So the pore pressure will be equals to the unit weight of water, which is always 62.4 in our case, and then multiply by the, the water depth. So the water depth what we, what we talk about is here. So this is the uh, groundwater table depth, of course, CW here. So the, the, the groundwater, the groundwater or, or depth, water table depth will be uh, 10 feet minus two feet, because the whole thing here, here is 10 feet and here is two feet. So 10 minus two, you got eight. That's how you got your uh, pore water pressure. And the vertical stress will be equals to the total stress minus the pore pressure. So this is the effective stress concept. And that's what we have been doing uh, for lecture three. So at this point, all of us should be very comfortable uh, calculating the stress one more time, the stress at few, few conditions. So that, <clears throat> okay, now next. Is what happened? What what happens if we have a surcharge? If we have a surcharge, so this is the above ground loading. So now we are not at free fuel anymore because of the surcharge. So we, we cannot expect with the surcharge, with the surcharge right there, we cannot like uh, the stress under underneath the ground will be the same as before. Cause like uh, uh, the previous like the previous conditions, we don't have uh, above ground loading. So now we expect the change and we need to quantify how much is changed. So that's, that's what, what we're trying to do here now. So the question is, how would the surcharge affect the vertical stress? And they're below the ground. And one one major like uh, concept or like uh, uh, like kind of like a tree field very obvious uh, observations is you can expect the the stress that induced by the surcharge will kind of like uh, going down with the depth. So the the stress or the extra stress induces, induced by the surcharge. We expect the stress, it goes down with depth. It kind of makes sense because why underneath your surcharge? Could be a building, could be like a, could be an earth dump. Why under, why underneath it, uh, the soil feeling like all of it. But if you go down with that, it will become smaller and smaller. So this always sure. So I give you like ten more seconds. 
So this always true, not only like a going down, not only going down vertically, but also going like a side rate. So we are expecting to stress. We we'll also the distribute the distribution the distributed stress come from the surcharge. We we'll also decreasing with the distance away from the uh, from the loading. So the surcharge uh, the. The, the induced distress from surcharge is decrease with distance away or the lateral. from the above ground loading. So this, this become like a, a two dimension problems. It's not just a matter of, matter of going down, it's also a matter of going away um, from, from the loading you have. So email is like, you know, if, Think about a labor wood. Think about a labor wood. If construction is like uh, what happens right next to your house, you know, they will affect your foundation a lot. But if you're, if there's like another like kind of construction is going maybe like a two blocks away from you, then you know you, you won't affect you uh, as much as like you have uh, something happening right next to uh, ten feet within your your uh, your your properties. So. Um, that's another concept over here, very important. Both the depth and distance array is what we're looking at. So how would how would the stress how would the stress look like? So um, and this the picture here on on the slide showed you like a result of a finite fine line element simulations. So it gives you kind of give you an idea as how the uh, stress got distributed. So uh, why and one more time, it's like a white underneath, why underneath the building right there, the loading right there. So try to use other color. Let me try to use a different color. Oops. So anything white underneath. Um, your structure or loading, you know, you kind of like a hot zone. But like uh, you will decrease with the depth, and also you will decrease with the depth, and also will decrease away from it. So this gives you a good uh, visualizations of through a three D fine line fine line element models how the stress look like, and the degree we talk about is is, is quite quite different. You could have like uh, almost like a uh, 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 one hundred percent of it, or suddenly like you know if you go down and go away, you know. You Becomes very close to zero. And uh, for this uh, topic, actually, the whole thing is quite complicated. Um, and for, for this class, as uh, first uh, geotech, you know, like your very first geotech class, uh, what we try to do is just uh, look at uh, three very simple scenario to start with. Um, so the stress distributions, you hide of so the stress so what we studying on now is the stress distributions based on the above ground loading and it highly depends on it highly depends on one factors is the footing geometry but the typical answer for geotechnical engineering is it depends and uh, for this case uh the where one where one important factors it depends on is the footing, the foundation. So footing means foundations, your foundations uh, geometry. And uh, for for our case, uh, for this uh, kind of geotech 101, we try to simplify, simplify it with only three cases. The first cases is we look at the whole thing, it's just a pawn node. 
So that's just the most straightforward way, you know. But, uh, and for this kind of like assumptions or this kind of like a simulations, uh, it makes sense to do is when you have a pose, a power pose or like a, a light pose, you know, you, you, you kind of like kind of a column sticking to the ground. So it makes sense that you kind of like a pawn no, a pawning to the ground. And, uh, and there's many, many different, many, many different ways to, to simulate or try to find out the stress, distributed stress. And for this case, uh, for this class, we only look at two methods uh, based on two engine, uh, two scientists or engineers. Um, I think back to the old days, like they don't have, uh, they don't have like a professional called engineers, but like um, uh, scientists. So the first one is rest guard. The other one is like a bosom nest. So there's two uh, methods right there to talk about how to simplify um, uh, distributed, distributed stress uh, from surcharge to become a pawn node. The other, the other method is the circular footings. So we we'll talk more in details on that later. So uh, there's another subcategories that we we'll get there. And then the third one is we simplify or like actually like you know many cases. Uh, in fact, uh, the the uh, foundations that we uh, put on the ground is is a rectangular rectangular shape. So again, there's like a three um, there's like a three uh, different design scenario here. We look at now pond load, uh, circular footings, and also rectangular footings. So this would be how like a pond load look like. So when we talk about circular footings. In fact, uh, we means like uh, uh, the foundations is in circle shape and also could be the third scenario is a rectangular footing. It's not a square, it's a rectangular. rectangular. And um, one more time, the, the main reference to look at is the DM, the Navy DM 7.1 like a menu. And, and, and on the chapter four, figure two and three, I may have it later. Yeah, the next slides are those two figures. Summarize like uh, 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 all the different design scenarios one more time based on the footing geometry. And this DM uh, seven point one manuals uh, is freely uh, freely available online. So feel free to go ahead to download it. It's a reference that everyone everyone use. So if you want to have a library, a super engine library or a geotechnical library, like you know, it's, it's a file that you always want to uh, pull out easily whether on a computer or on a bookshelf. So speaking of the, uh, the DM menus, um, so the DM menus, chapter four, figure two, uh, based of, of uh, summarize what kind of like a design scenario you have based on the footing geometry, starting with the porno. So this is the porn loading, uh, 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 condi loading conditions and uh, it gives you the coarse form solutions, which means they try to solve for the answer, end up with well, one single equations. So if you want to find out the stress, if you want to find out the stress, so this is the porno. This is the porno. And uh, they try to generalize it. If you want to find out the stress at anywhere, uh, sigma z, any depth below the ground, and sigma r is the stress like away from it laterally, so and then it's kind of like you have a coordinate at the pawn node. So anywhere below and away from that pawns, you can find out the stress with these equations. The vertical stress and the horizontal stress. So those are the equations. So this is the pawn loading. We will talk about this, uh, uh, those equations specifically. And there's also other different kind of design scenario, for example, like a a line, a line loading, a uniform like a load rectangular area. So this is kind of like the rectangular footing conditions we talk about too. And you realize that like, it's, it's a very complicated, it's a very complicated like a, a, a scenario. Um, as you would give a, a coarse form solutions that you have a, a very lengthy equations right there. Cause you try to talk about uh, the, uh, the stress in the ground in two dimensions. So end up the solutions could be quite complicated. And this is the circulars loading, it's the circular area. 
So pretty much like uh, we we'll talk about these three conditions. First, the second, and this is the third. But the message here is uh, uh, we are only time because of time constraint. We only can cover three uh, design scenario, and we cannot like uh, uh, go more than that. So that's why. Uh, so that's why, like, uh, I want you to realize uh, there's a lot more different, like, a geometry, footing geometry. The colorizations here are all based on the footing geometry. geometry. And, like, uh, even, like, uh, uh, in, in real practice, you could have something, like, being irregular loading. And in that case, you don't have, you don't have uh, cold swarm solutions. What you need to do, you pretty much need to build a, a, a computer model try to model what you have. So, so beyond that, uh, you even have more complicated like uh, uh, loading patterns. It could be like a, a strip load, a triangular load, a slope loading, uh, so forth and so on. And the, um, the, the DM 7.1 manual try to capture most of it. So let's start with our very first one. The very first one. So the again, the first uh, footing geometry we have the pawn loading, and we are looking at the uh, rest and guard equations now, and this is the the uh, the formula they have. It's a cold form solutions. So pretty much like uh, uh, how this how they come up with these equations is they try to solve equilibrium with a static conditions. So just like a static car, so they, they try to discrete the ground and then take a solve elements and then solve for it uh, based on like a, a, a homogeneous, based on different assumptions, based on uh, the soil is hom homogeneous, uh, isotropic, uh, you, you don't care about the soil weight and, like, and you also assume the soil is a linear elastic materials and then like you solve for equilibriums and end up this with the equations we got, we get. And the details of it, I don't want to uh, uh, spend too much time over here. Otherwise you will be uh, another half hour just talk about mathematic equations. Uh, the, the details, uh, the math setups, you can look at this reference, uh, which is, should be also available uh, online on, uh, on Canfax. So go back to this rest and guard equations. So as engineers at this point, uh, the, my expectations is you know how to use, uh, at least know how to use these equations. And uh, this is the first step. And more importantly uh, for you to understand is the whole thing based on your assumptions, based on what you, what you assume the foundations to geometry is. If this is a no, you can use this one. And uh, what being call, qualified to, to assume your uh, loading conditions as a pawn slow, uh, it depends on what you try to design. Something like a, like a post, like a light post or power post, you know, maybe you can, you can use something like a simple uh, equations like this. So based on, based on this uh, uh, design scenario, this equation is right here. So the P is kind of the loading, the Z is the depth, and the R, the R here is the distance away. From the uh, pond load, so we have an example here on this picture. So uh, we have a pond loading right there. We assume maybe a like maybe like a, a power post uh, is a thousand pounds. And you want to find out, you want to find out at this depth, maybe like uh, at the depth of 10 feet down and, uh, and uh, a distance of three feet away, what is the stress at this point? What is the stress at this point? So you want to find out what is the theoretical stress at this point. So first of all, you want to find out the distributed stress uh, from the above ground loading. So we we'll try to find out the delta sigma that come from the light poles. So if you plug in the equations, 
So you have the 1,000 pounds right here. And the, the, the formatations is or a symbol. Well, don't forget about the units. So every time this, uh, all the calculations that I do, I will put on the units. So now, oh, sorry, the depth is 10, not three. This is 10 feet. One plus two times. Now we are three feet away and 10 feet down. So this is the resting card equations. And if you do the math here, you shouldn't be too bad. And now uh, we do our math. And what we got here is 3.18 pong per feet square. So this is a stress. So uh, what telling us is uh, when you have a thousand, a thousand pounds above the ground, when you are 10 feet down and three feet away, we are feeling, we are just feeling about three pounds. So that is the distri distributed stress from the pond node. And realize that like uh, this is not the total, like the total stress all the stress that like uh, 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 at that level. Because for this star elements, it's not only not only the surcharge, but you also have the above ground uh, uh, soil on top of you. So you, you also have the, the stress from soil or of the free fuel conditions that you have, what you have been calculating. So just like what you have been doing. So the stress here will be the unit weight of the soil times the depth. So with that, this is 1150 pound per feet square. And the final, the final stress of this two will be equals to the stress that you have from the soil plus the distributed stress from the surcharge. So pretty much you superimpose those two. Then you will have the, uh, final stress conditions. So this is the final answer for the stress, not only from the soil, but also from the uh, surcharge, distributed stress from the surcharge. So you expect like, if you're, if you're asked to calculate the stress again, why underneath the, why underneath the loading, or you calculate the stress again at other points, you will have you can have very different answers, and based on your interests, you need to you need to uh, find out all of them. Sometimes maybe because you have a tunnel going through uh, uh, right underneath the um, the structure, so you need to find out the stress. So a lot of like a metro tunneling project going through now, so a lot of like a design and analysis like I need to handle that, or like just because of uh, uh, your labor, your la at the neighborhood. Uh, right next to you know the, the the house right next to you they have a remodeling goes going on and you need to find out if they change uh remodel the whole thing you know how would how would like uh the uh, how would uh the constructions we alert uh uh the the stress in the ground which could result in settlements for your properties so that's that's what we uh, try to work on so the, um, again, uh, we are still at this first. So when you, when you try to like learn this, uh, try to keep track with these three different scenario. Well, there could be, there could be more that like for this class, we only, be, uh, we only focus on three different design scenario. We are talking about the porno right now. 
and then we will move on to the circular footings and the rectangular footings. So now we we just finished our very first uh, geometry pawn node with the uh, rest of guard equations. So now uh, we move on to the next approach to the Boussinet equations. So uh, this Boussinet equations are uh, very similar approach. Uh, uh, they use cold form solutions. Pretty much, they uh, they try to solve for the uh, uh, the answer mathematically based on a lot of assumptions. So the difference between this uh, Boussinet and this Western card is uh, the different assumptions they have. The same problems, but different approaches. So they have these times. Uh, they assume uh, uh, this is free of initials like a stress and. Uh, uh, deformations. They also assume uh, the modulus of uh, 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 elastic CTC is constant, and also they use what well, the main difference is they use like a linear superpositions. So so that's why end up they have a uh, different answers in terms of like a distributed stress. So again, if you want to see the math, and I highly encourage you to to do that. Because uh, if you uh, you know at at, at this at, at this like uh, at this time at this age like you know if you only can able to plug in the equations and find the answer pretty much you can you can be replaced by a computer or computer software package. Uh, but the real engineers now you know what people are looking for are the ones that are able to 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 code it or to to develop a simple spare sheet to to find out all the answer and the math. Uh, we don't have time to walk through it, uh, uh, the whole thing, but like I uh, highly encourage you to go to this like a cost notes, this cost notes to look at the uh, uh, the math uh, durations behind and how they come up with different, from different assumptions, they come up with different uh, answer, both the resting guard uh, equations and the Boussinet equations. So very similar, uh, if we try to find out the stress at a depth 10 feet down and three feet away. So I just random, randomly pick up those two uh, dimensions or so, uh, pick these locations, but it could be anything else. So if we plug in the equations again, it's very similar. This time I don't want to spend time to just like I do the simple math, but if you pick plug in the equations this time, uh, we got a slightly different answer. So this is the distributed stress of pawn load, very important. Remember what you're doing. This is a pawn loading that you assume uh, based on the foundation geometry or loading geometry. And, but this time with the Boussinet equations. So you will be slightly different than what we find uh, from the Western guy equations. Previously, we got 3.18. Now we got 3.85 and end up the stress. So what I call the final stress is you have the soil part. So the same thing at the previous like uh, examples. Oops. So this is from the surcharge. You add up the two, you have the actual stress in total. So this is Geotech 101. This is this is uh, uh, the, the stress distributors, the, the stress distributions from surcharge 101. We look at the most simple case, a pawn load. The next step is we move on to our circular uh, foundations. I think we'll be starting to get a little bit more complicated. So the, uh, the next design scenario here is we have our circular footings. And um, one more time, uh, but that's like uh, two conditions right here. First is uh, we look at the conditions of like a, underneath the center 
of your foundations. Um, so for circular footings, uh, we have two cases. We look at the stress underneath the center of the footings. This is our case number one. So we just pretty much we just look at this line. In this case, so the distance away, the radio, the radio horizontal distance away from the footing of this, uh, the center of the circles is zero. So pretty much we take away one dimensions. We take away one dimensions. So what being a uh, difference here now is um, we, we are a little bit more complicated than the point load. Because for point loading, you don't have uh, an extra dimensions or extra unknown, or uh, maybe better call it to be dimensions. You don't have this extra dimensions of the uh, geometry or the, uh, the characteristic of the foundations, which is the size, the size of the foundations, the diameters or the radius of your uh, uh, foundations or, or load, loading area. So now this come into our calm. And be very careful on on the uh, of the uh, of the terms. So previously, um, the uh, the out terms here is the distance away from the uh, loading. But here now, the out terms is the uh, the radius of your loading circles. So if you re reference to uh, the DM seven point one, the the Navy manuals. Uh, they specify each term. So you need to uh, be very sure like what kind of terminology we talk about here. And the cold swamp solutions, the cold swamp solutions tell us the distributed stress. So this is the distributed stress. Along the center. At any depth is equals to this co-form solutions. And the P here pretty much is the loading. And the Z here is the depth again. And the R here is the radius, not the distant array. We are talking about circular footings. So it's the radius of the uh of the uh, of the foundations. So next is uh, it's just like a simple examples. Just a simple examples. Uh, assume we have a thousand pounds loadings again, and the size of the foundations is five feet of radius, and we're looking at depth of about like ten feet down. The tens of damp feet dumps. So if we're plugging the equations and we want to find out the stress. So uh, this the stress due to the surcharge will be equals to the the loading times these factors. If we plug in the equations, let's try to work on work on that. I don't have the solution with me, so let's try to work on this uh, equations together. One thing here: this should be this the area. So here should have the area. So I need to make us be very careful. This loading is a stress. Is in terms of stress. So whatever you have uh, as a P, you know, you need to be in terms of stress. Otherwise, like you know, your delta sigma is not is not in uh, in stress form. It become a loading. It's not it's not correct because uh, delta sigma mean to be a stress. So in this case will be um, the area will be equals to pi r squared. 
the thousand pounds divided by pi and then five feet square times 0.36. I think, is that what you got? Okay, thank you. So this is the stress we have. Like on the, um, on the on this track, talk about like uh, we have different kind of like uh, geometry conditions. So we start with Pono, so end up with just uh, one very simple coarse form solutions, uh, Western Gaul or Boussinets. And then like we talk about the circular footings. But when we talk about circular footings, we just, what we just did is the, uh, right underneath the sander which means there's no extra dimensions of distance away from the center of the footings. So now things got a little bit complicated. Yes, we look at the stress. We look at the stress of uh, form uh, circular footings that is away from the center. So why it become a little bit more complicated now is we try to bring in uh, extra dimensions. Um, so on the point node right here, we only have two dimensions, the depth and the distance away from the, uh, the depth and distance away from the point node. And the circular footings for the first scenario, we have the depth and we have the radius of the, of the, of the foundation. So you need to be very careful. Uh, what is uh, what is R and what is X? So it's sometimes the same uh, terminology, but means different things. Like you know, everything reference to the um, to the DM manuals. So you know, you it, uh, to me like you know, uh, uh, if you just if you just stick with a textbook, you know, you should follow the textbook. But like you know, when you go to work, you know, it doesn't mean like everyone use the same textbook. Very likely, like different people use different textbook. But like uh, as a good engineers, you need to figure out uh, what is the common reference that everyone, everyone use. And in this case, it's the DM 7.1. So I highly recommend you, you use the term, terminology that being consistent with them. So that is the uh, uh, case 2A. Case 2B, difficult now. It kind of like, uh, uh, it, it, changed, it changed the whole game. Because like uh, previously, you realize up to this point, you only have kind of like two unknowns. So thing is, thing is, thing is, life is life is good. Geotech is easy, as long as you only have two unknowns. But get, uh, up to the conditions or the case of two B, now you have uh, unknown depth. Not the unknown, but like kind of like a a, a, a variable or dimensions. Uh, you, you also like you know uh, what can be changed is the radius of the of the uh, foundations, and also you have the distance away from the foundations. So now pretty much like uh, the whole thing step up quite a lot from two unknowns to three unknowns. So what being differences you can tell here if you are going to two unknowns you end up like have a equations like this. But if you have like a multiple unknowns. You could be have like equations like that, so that's why things got like you know a lot more complicated when you bring in a new dimensions. Okay. So for the case that like uh, 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 when you when we have three unknowns right here, both the depth, the uh, the distance away from the center. And also the uh, the radius of the uh, of your of your circular footings, and what you we have now, the coarse form solutions is so complicated that excuse me. So the coarse form uh, solutions is so complicated that uh, uh, you will be on like uh, manageable with with our, our, our equations, such that like uh, you come you have uh, DM seven point one, they have a design chart. So uh, DM 7.01, chapter four, figure find is the solutions. Uh, she's called the graphical solution. So our graphical solutions 
of the distribu distributed stress. So like, uh, like uh, well, uh, many other like engine procedure, well, first of all, this, this is the solutions that I talk about. So this next slide is pretty much give you this I factors. So this I factors is kind of like telling you at different depth and di different distance away, you will have a different answer and represent by the I factors, the influence factors right there. So um, this kind of like a kind of like the solutions, like a manual or like kind of like a cookbook that you use, but any times, you know, we have a, a design chart or graphical solutions, the first thing to do is to read the manual, understand what's, you know, what's going on. And this is the part that you need to understand or you need to like understand the term terminology and stuff like that. So this is the circular food thing right there with a radius of two R. So, so that's why R is stand for the radius. And this is the loading footings. The loading circular footings. And we are talking about at a depth below the loading and a distant array. So pretty much we look at, at this point. So this is the point of inches. So at this point of interest, which is uh, uh, a depth of Z down and uh, a distant X away, and we want to find out the stress at this point. Point of interest of stress. This is what we try to find out. So, and you represent, represent by the factor I here. So the factor I is, is what you try to solve for. The I is the influence factors. So factor I is the influence factors we try to solve, we try to solve for. And now it's a, it's a matter on how, how to find out this, this I from this, from this graph. So I hope like, you know, um, uh, the resolutions of, of uh, whether your paper or screen is not too bad. Uh, first, we look at the Y axis here. So the Y axis is the dimension of Z over R. So Z is the depth and R is the, the radius. So pretty much is the depth normalized by the, uh, the dimensions of the footings, of the footings. And uh, within uh, each like a contour lines, so you see a bunch of contour lines over there, you have all this like uh, circles. So um, uh, the Y axis, Z over R, you know, you need, you need to know how to get there. The other, the other one you need to know how to get there is this one, is each of the contour lines. So each of the contour lines is uh, represented by the, the circle right there. So each line, you know, it has, it has its own circles and the, the values inside the circles means X over R right here, X over R. And what is X again? X is the distance away from the center of the uh, circular footings, and R is um, is the radius. So pretty much everything is normalized normalized by the uh, the radius of the circular footings. Um, so if you know uh, both the uh, ratios of Z over R and X over R. This will give you the I values. Because knowing knowing these two values will give you like a, 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 a intersection points. Pretty much you know like uh, we can do examples together. You know all the y axis values 
and then you know like which contour line to stop at. And so pretty much this is the y-axis. And this is the contour line. So you know the y-axis and you know the contour line, the intersections is the x-axis. And the x-axis, whatever you have, what you read, that is your influence, influence factors. And be very careful, this is a log scale. So this is a log scale. As a geotechnical engineer, you need, you need to know how to deal with the log scale. And uh, for example, so this is like a 0 .0, 0, 0, uh, 0 0.001, and this means 0 0.002, right? And this is 0 0.003, 0 0.004, 0 0.005, so on and so forth, up to this is 0 0.01. And this is like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, up to this is 0 0.1. And this is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And up to the edge here is 1.0. So you start from 0 0.01 and go to 0 0.001, uh, x-axis, the smallest value on the x-axis to the maximum values of x-axis, which is 1.0. So uh, uh, very similar to, to the previous like uh, slide, slide number 14, uh, slide number 16, give you examples, uh, the same site, the same uh, circular footings, the same loading, but what being different now is you have, we have uh, a distance away, the X distance. Uh, now it's like a three, three feet away from the center. So this is equal to three feet. This is equal to 10 feet. So at a depth of 10 feet and a distance three feet away from the center of the circular footings, we want to find out the stress. So, uh, and now this is a three uh, wearable, three dimensional problem. So that's why it become much complicated that we need uh, the design chart. So we will find out, first of all, we find out Z over R, which is 10, you are by five, which is two. And we also find X over R, which is I uh, got three over five, which is uh, pawn six. So now what we do here is want to find out I, the inference factors. And we need to use the design chart to help us to do that. So we go to this design chart. First of all, we know the uh, Z over R is two. So two is here. The X at the Y axis reading, reading two. Let me try to use other color for this one. So the um, Z over R equals to two. The other one we find out is uh, X over R, which is 0 0.6. So now I hope everyone with me. So this is, this is, the, this is the, the most, uh, this is a new thing or this is the most challenging part you could be. So we, ha we, 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 we want 0 0.6 but we don't have an exact contour line to be 0.6. So we need to interpret, we need to interpret uh, between the contour lines. So what we have is uh, we have, uh, we want 0.6, uh, it's between 0.5 and 0.75. So 0.5 pretty much is this line. 0.5 is this line. And 0.75 is this line. 
So in between those two lines, which is this point right here, So I take the midpoint between the two. Usually, we, we just, we, what we can do, because this, this is uh, a, a cold swamp solution pre, uh, uh, preliminary design. So if you want to have the very accurate results, pretty much you need to build a 3D final element models. Uh, this one by eyeball, we wait here. So we know the y-axis. We know the contour line could be by eyeball. We go to the x-axis. That's our answer. So, uh, which is between point two and point three, right here. So this is point two five. So maybe I, I call the uh, the I values. Yes. Point two seven. So here the I value is equal point two seven, and the uh, stress will be equals to uh, 0.27 times the stress. So the stress will be a thousand pounds divided by the area. So that should give me the final stress will be equals to one one five zero pound per cubic feet square plus three point four four. rectangular footings. Um, so now, uh, moving on, we do have a rectangular shape of a loading area. And uh, what, why this become more complicated or more like uh, 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 difficult now is because uh, compared it with the circular footings, we just talk about the geometry. So we just talk about the geometry of the of the of the of the uh, of the two shape being a circle versus like a being a rectangles. Now we have one more one more dimensions to add in to to bring on, because to define uh, to define a circles, what you need is just uh, uh, one dimension, which is either like the diameters or the radius is the same thing. So you just need to have one like a uh, parameters to define the shape of the circle. But when you move on to rectangle, you need, you need two dimensions. You need both the, uh, the length and the width. So you get the length right here, and also you have the width right there. Which, which means like, uh, 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 the more variables, you know, the more complicated like uh, cold swarm solutions we will get. So that's why I like, you know, moving on this, this can be very, very complicated uh, at the end of this lecture. Um, but like we start from uh, the most uh, simple uh, calculation first, uh, we talk about a approximate method. So I would, I would think, I would, I would say this is kind of like a fuel method. So you will use this method like when you had a fuel, just because you don't have, you know, you don't have a nice chair, you don't have a calculator, you bunch of you, what you have is just a pencil and a clipboard and a piece of paper. So when you feel like, you know, you need to do quick calculations, like at, at moments that like, you know, uh, you can't uh, sit or stand for long, then like uh, this, this become very handy. But so, so that, so that's why I call approximate method. It's not, it's not accurate, but if you, if you need something correct, this method, this method uh, works well. So the simple calculation is, um, it's right here. It's just the uh, the change of the stress. The distributed stress will be equals to the uh, 
the P, which is the loading again. So it's very likely is in uh, in terms of a weight, so in pounds or kilograms, and then like a divided by the area. So one more time, this is a stress. So the data sigma is a stress. So end up like you know like uh, what the answer you find, you know, you, you cannot you cannot be in something like in pounds or whatever. You need to be in in, in terms of a stress. So PSF pound per uh, uh, feet square or 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 kilo new or kilo pascal or kilo newtons per meter square. So uh, it's just a stress. So you have the loading divided by um, the width of the uh, your oh, sorry the length of the foundations plus the the depth uh, times uh, the the width uh, plus the depth. So this is uh, what we call also what we call is to be the two point one method or or two to one ratio method. Which means uh, whatever we do here only works. It only works. This method only work under like our influence zones, which is at a uh, two to one ratio. So this is the the influence zones. Oops. So this is the influence zones. So which means like uh, this is an approximate method that uh, you realize that it, it, it can be like not so accurate because everything it, it assumes that under the same depth, under the same depth, every points under the same zones, they have the same, um, they have the same uh, distributed stress, which means for example, under the same depth, maybe at this point, so the depth is the same, But like, uh, but like uh, at the different locations, they assume you have the same amount of stress, which means why underneath the centers to the edge of the influence zones, they assume the distributed stress is the same, which we, we know that is not true because like uh, uh, you, uh, we have been, we have been like uh, tearing, uh, we have been like, you know, uh, learning this that is uh, uh, why at the center versus like a, some distance away from the center you will have different amount of stress. But this method is quick and easy. But the trade-off is, is not accurate. You know, sense that at, at a constant depth, whatever like a, within the zone, the, the influence zones, we assume to, the distribution stress are the same. So, uh, you know, like the advantage of this method, but also you need to know about the limitations. So that's very important as a geotech engineers. You know, each method you use, each equations that you use, you need to be ready to defend yourself. Where right? people will ask you, you know, or maybe within the meetings, like you know, your, your geotech colleagues or like your your colleagues are from structural side ask ask you why this equation or why this number, or uh, why this method. You need to be ready ready to defend. You know, it's not just like uh, plugging equations, find the right answer. That's the computer. But as an engineer, you need to be ready to always for to defend your your approach that's one thing like you know the other thing like you know at some at some point of your career you know uh maybe you know you got you got in some project not going so well you need to go to the court and that times you need to uh uh defend yourself or defend your 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 firm or your team you know that point become very serious um <clears throat> but anyway so you need to understand the limitations limitations of this method where it's not so accurate is where approximate and this method is only valid within the uh, two to one like influence zones. So a quick examples for this uh, 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 problem here is if we want to find out the stress at 10 feet down, so uh, quickly packing the formula will be just, uh, you have the loading, uh, you have a thousand pounds right there, and the depth is, uh, 10 feet and the width of the uh, five or the length or the length and width sometimes many times you can or actually like link off with like uh, for analysis like this is interchangeable but let's stick with uh, the terminology so b here means the length and the length is how much um five feet and the width is like a uh, three feet so this is feet and feet 
and then you do your calculations. So 5.12, I think it's a pound per cubic feet square, right? Distribute the stress, and that is from the loading and pass the overburden stress you have of, uh, you, you know, you experience like a form to salt on top of it. So with these two terms, we know the final stress is 115.12 PSF. So this is the approximate method, it's the quick method. It's not so accurate, but something like uh, you can work out quickly uh, if you need, if time is pressed, or if you are, if, if you are in, working in the field, this is, this is uh, uh, a very quick way, very good quick way to, to find the, uh, the answer. So uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. So if, if we want to find, find the uh, true answer, I mean, like uh, for more like accurate, uh, well, I can't keep, say it's true because like, there's a lot of assumptions like uh, behind to, to set up this uh, closed form solutions too. So, uh, but, uh, uh, but using like a similar approach, like a circular uh, footings, uh, some closed form solutions can give us more reliable results. And um, the same idea, uh, we want to find out the influence, the influence factors. Whoops, sorry. You want to find out the influence factors. If we can find out this influence factors and the distributed stress will be equals to the um, the influence factors times the loading divided by the area. So what we try to do here now is find out, find out the I, similar to what we have done on Tuesday. And at the end of the day, uh, this is the cold swarm solutions. How to find out the I. A bunch of like uh, parameters, uh, and then like uh, you also based on M and N. And what 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 is M and N? Are uh, the uh, related to the geometry of the foundation footings. So that's why I keep like uh, uh, mention about. Uh, Mention about this. It is the uh, geometry, the geometry of your fund, uh, of the of the loading area matters. So um, now to define this, the length and the width um, for rectangular uh, footings, we normalize it by uh, the, the the depth. So we the m, well m and n is just interchangeable. So what is m? Whoops. So M, in fact, is the, the width of the uh, foundations divided by the depth. So this is the width, and this is the depth. And N is equals to uh, B over Z, the width divided by the depth. And, and the M and N is interchangeable. We, we will try that. We will try to, uh, to show you why they are, why they are interchangeable. So you know the uh, M and N, and if you plug in these equations right here, then you can solve for the I. Because since now, uh, uh, we have like uh, three variables. So that's why, so that's why uh, uh, like the cold form solutions will give you a complicated like uh, 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 influence factors. So the three variables are the M, and N, and also the Z. Those are the three variables that we talk about. And how about the distance away from the uh, for, for the uh, loadings uh, from the uh, uh, footing centers? And be very careful, because like uh, pretty much we only ha can handle three variables. We cannot handle four. So that's why this method this method only specify you are looking for the stress not the center, not a distant away, but right at the corner. So this is very important. This is very important. We only look at, whoops, I don't think it's a good color. So you only talk about the stress right at the corner of the footings. This is, this. you need to be very careful on this. You can, with this method, 
you know, if you just like uh, uh, use this method directly, you, you, you cannot find the stress at the center. Not at the center. But only, but only at the edge. So this, the limitations of this method is like uh, only works, whoops. At the edge or the corner of the footing. So this this could be troublesome because like uh, the most interesting or the most like a uh, concern points, the concern locations or the highest like a uh, distribution stress is always at the center. But this method only allows you to find the stress at the corner. So we 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 will talk about how how to get around with this. Um, but keep that in mind. You know, we are only able to find out the stress at this corner. So, um, and the other fact is this equation here become very complicated, become very complicated. So complicated that, that like, you know, also you need to have an understand, understanding that like, you know, all this like uh, uh, good work is, was developed that uh, more than like maybe like a half of century ago, right? This maybe from uh, the 50 or the 40s. Back to that time, it's like, you know, not, we're not even talking about computer. Or we talk about a calculator is just is not quite accessible. So uh, everything pretty much is, is need to be done like on piece of paper. So uh, the computer program, so back to the old days, what I call computer programs, back to the old days uh, is in fact, is all this like, graphical chart. So this is, again, this is our graphical solutions, uh, just like the one that you have seen for circular footings, but this one is for the square footings. So this is the, uh, uh, the graphical solutions uh, for pretty much for this equations. So this equations, you have a graphical solutions uh, on page 19. So on this next slide, next slide, so this chart over there pretty much is representing the equations, the solutions of the equations. So nice and handy. So once you know how to use this chart, then you don't need to like uh, plug in all the numbers and you can find your answer. But the back side, you know, the, the, uh, 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 the advantage of this is uh, you need to eyeball, you know, sometimes it's not quite accurate if you try to interpret between uh, the contour lines. But anyways, uh, let's do a quick examples together. Uh, so we, 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 you can walk, walk us through how to uh, use uh, the design chart. So this, uh, this uh, problems is very, uh, very similar to the one that we have been keep working on. The same soil profile at the same depth. Uh, so as, uh, uh, you know, soil profile is uh, you have a soil unit weight of 115 pounds per cubic feet. Uh, at a depth of time, uh, of at a depth of uh, ten feet uh, down to your footings, and one more times, one more times, this method only works at the corner of the footings. So that's why we are now we are finding the stress at the corner of the footing only. So that's uh, what we're trying to find. So at the corner, at the corner of the rectangular footings, we want to find the distributed stress. So to, to, to find that, um, we need to use this design chart. And this design chart, every time when we start something like, a, uh, use any like kind of like a, like a menu or, or graphical solutions, for very first, very important, very first thing to do, read the menu. Uh, to understand what, what all the terms means. So it, it, it tells you like, uh, like what we got, could just uh, talk about, finding the M and N. So the M is the is B over Z. So B is the uh, uh, the width, and N is the length divided by the, the depth. And they also mentioned this. They also mentioned this. Oops, sorry. 
We also mentioned this. The M and N are, are interchangeable. So which means like, you know, uh, uh, M can, uh, can also be L over Z and N can also be uh, B over Z. So which means like, but, but you can just cannot repeat. So you can, you can, you can like exchange those two terms. So L is B over Z and is equal to L over Z. You can do it this way or you can do, uh, do it this way too. You know, if you do it two times, you would get the same answer. You can try it yourself because the whole thing, uh, the whole like a closed form solutions, they have an assumption that uh, you have a symmetric like a footings. So N can also be B over Z. So those are interchangeable. Just that's what it what it means. Okay, and uh, with after you know M and N, and then you can find out the uh, uh, the i, so we talk about how to find the i, and the delta, delta sigma z that you solve for is equal to the i times the uh, the stress, the loading stress of uh, at the ground at the ground surface. Okay, so let's let's work out this problem together. Uh, help me over here. So what is uh, m? So m is equals to b over z. So let's say the b here. Um, the width is three and the depth is 10, right? And N, it will be five, which is the length. We talk about that in the problems, it will be 10. So N of this will be equals to become 0.3 and this become 0.5. So to read this chart, to read this chart, the N values, is, is your x axis. So this is your n is the x axis. And the m values are the are those contour lines. So very similar to the circular footings. You know, uh, you know one of the axis and you know the contour lines, then you can find the answer at the other axis. And your y axis right there is the i values that you try to look for. So for this case, we want to find, uh, we define M is at, um, let me just write it down. We define M is equal to 0 0.3. Well, let's start with N first. N is 0 0.5. And uh, you, need to, you need to know how to read this, this, this log scale. So on the X axis, we have the 0 0.01 to start with. And the next one is, this is 0 0.02. In fact, this is 0 0.02. This is 0 0.03. And then 0 0.04, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then this becomes 0 0.1, right? And this is 0 0.2. And this is 0 0.3, so forth and so forth. And then until you hit 1.0 right here. And then you hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and um, and the far most, the maximum value is, is ten. So pretty much this is a log scale from zero point zero ones to ten. So if our n value is equal to 0.5, which means uh, we are at the x-axis right here. All right, got a perfect hands. So this is like a 0 0.5. Then we look at our um, M value, which is 0 0.3. And we we'll, the, the M value, this is 0 0.1, this is 0 0.2. So this is exactly 0 0.3. So in the case that you don't have a, a, a like exact number on the contour line, just like the previous examples, you need to uh, uh, eyeball it. So if you have 0.35, that would be like a somewhere between like a 0.3 and 0.4. So this is this is 0.3 and this is 0.4. So if you have 0.35, it will be like the midpoint between the two. But now if you have 0.3. So the intersections between the contour line and the x-axis of 0.5, that will be our i value that we're looking for. 
for examples we talk about. So, well, we eyeball this. So this will become about 0 0.057 or 58. I think it's more accurate to be 58 just by eyeball. So 5758. Five, so the one of the disadvantage of this method, pretty much is based on eyeball. Okay. Oops. So, so we got the I values of zero point zero. Whoops. You go to zero point zero. Um, zero point zero five eight. So your di the distributed stress will be equals to um. One more times, it will be like uh, the loading divided by the area, which is five feet times three feet, and then also times the I values. All right, so this one we got 3.86. So this this is the exact same problems with the previous examples. So you guys realize the difference? The, the uh, previous examples, we got like uh, the approximate method, we got 5.12. But now with this a little bit more data method, we got few one x seven. So different method for sure will give you a different answer. So that's why you, uh, you always need to mention or uh, like you know to tell people which method you're using, and also knowing knowing the uh, the limitations and the expectations uh, come out of uh, each method. Be ready, be ready to communicate uh, to 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 always be ready, be ready to explain. Uh, to your uh, to your uh, engineer peers, sometimes like you know you may you need to explain to the public if you are at the important positions. So remember, remember uh, the the uh, the limitations the limitations of the uh, uh, rectangular uh, method the approach we just talked about. Well, it only works it only works at the corner of the foundations. And this is this is this is like uh, quite bothering because um, as engineers, you want to find out the, the stress at the worst case scenario locations, which is not a corner. Actually, it's not a corner. The worst case scenario, or I put this way, the most interested point for a given uh, foundations, uh, for particular for the rectangular shape is at the center, not at the corner of the uh, of the uh, of the locations. Uh, but because of the uh, capacity, com uh, compactability, uh, the complexity of uh, of the dimensions, and also so forth and so forth, um, at the corner is the easiest way to 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 find out the solutions for the cold form solutions. So that's why the the whole method, the whole method right here, the whole solutions only works at the corner. So now knowing the limitations and also knowing like a point of interest we talk about, we just try to get, uh, you know, just try to work along with this issue. So that's why they come up with other approach, what we call the superpositions, which help us, which help us to get around this problem, yes, we know that like we only get able to find the stress at the uh, corner, but we want to find the stress at the center. So this superpositions method help us to find uh, the stress at the center through finding the uh, uh, the stress from the corner. So which means like a uh, this method is yes, when you have uh, our foundations, when you have our foundations, um, what we can do is we divide this foundation by four parts. We divide this foundation by four parts. So if we divide this foundation by four parts or four equal pieces, then we are able, then we will be able to find out the stress at the corner of the four pieces. So what we have done here is we chop this foundation by four parts. 
So now we have four pieces of equal dimensions. And if we are looking for the, uh, the stresses of each pieces, we are at the corner of it. Because now the center point of the whole foundations, in fact, is the corner of these four pieces. So for this case, the loading on the uh, uh, fun, uh, for the original the loading on our original foundations A B C D becomes the loadings of four times any of each four pieces E B F G, right? So this is the uh, A B C D, and now we try to look at the uh, we just try to look at the stress form one of these little pieces, but the corner of it will be at the center of the whole foundations. For example, E, e, F, e B, F, G, oops. So we just try to look at like uh, these little pieces and the loading out of it times four times, that will be equals to the whole foundations. And we are still like uh, being bothered with the method. We are looking at the corner of these little pieces. Try, let's try this problems. Uh, let's try out this problem. Let's try out this problem. Um, like the uh, the previous one. So you have the same the same uh, geometry. We're looking at like a depth of ten feet down. Um, I think this is five feet, right? And this is uh, three feet. If I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong. So uh, the same geometry, but now we are not looking at the corner. So the difference between this one and this one that we work together is we were at the corner. So it matters. The locations, the geometry uh, matters. We were at the corner, but now we are at the center. So here is find the distributed stress at the center. So this part now, the dimensions is five divided by two, right? Five feet divided by two. Half of the original length and also half of the original height. Uh, so our original uh, width. So half of the uh, length and half of the uh, width. So our M value now becomes like a half divided by 10, right? Because um, M, one more time, M is the uh, length or the width uh, uh, divided by the depth. Same as the N value. So now it's half of it. So M now is 0.15. And again, our M and N are interchangeable. And N is 0.25. Maybe let me start with the N value first. So this is uh, 0.25. So somewhere around here. And M is like a, a 0.15. So this is a 0.1 and this is 0.2. So interpret between those two will be the midpoint. Well, I try my best. It's very hard to move. So let, let, let's say here, you know, it's not very accurate, but I have a hard time to move my, my ruler. So um, it would be about 0.17. And when we calculate our stress, the distributed stress will be equals to four times the I values. 
and then times uh, um, time distress uh, from the loading. So you will be four times 0.17 times uh, like our previous samples, the P is a thousand pounds. So I assume this is a thousand pounds. And the area now is uh, the whole foundations because we have already multiplied by four times. So that will be five feet times three feet again. So if we do our math here, so we do our math again. We get 4.5. Right? And you realize this number, in fact, is greater than um, the one that we found previously, 3.86, because we were at the corner. So the same foundations, the same loading, the same soils, but we were at the corner, but now we are at the center. So uh, you won't be surprised that the stress, in fact, go up a little bit. So any questions on this? So this, what we call is the uh, superpositions. So you'll be more fun that like uh, uh, we have uh, other problems like like we look at locations other than the two points that we talk about. So we talk about the corner, we talk about the center, and now is the what if questions because engineers we need to like uh, are able to find ways to solve the problem from any scenario. Now we are as a scenario that we are not at like either of those two conditions. So for example, this may be like your, this may be like uh, your house. And this is, this is maybe somewhere like, you know, uh, there's a job site or there's uh, could be like a, some uh, uh, construction going on. Or like, you know, the other way around, you know, you're upgrading your home. You are doing constructions on your site. And there's like another lawyer sitting, uh, you know, right next to you or at, at like, you know, another box uh, out of your, uh, you know, away from your housing. Then like, you know, you know that like any, any damage you do it to their house, to his, this lawyer's house, you know, they, they will go after you. So that's why like before all the constructions, you need to find out like what the stress uh, from the change of the stress because of your site to them. So you want to find out the stress at some locations away from your, from your, from your, from your uh, project site. So there's many different kinds of scenario we need to think of. And, um, you know, in our cost sections, we all like could be something like this now. You want to find out like the, uh, we want to find out the stress at some depth and also some distance away from your foundations. Well, maybe like point to the sand there. So some distance and some depth away from your uh, rectangular footings. So if this is a circular footing, your life will be easier. Or if this is a point low, because everything again coupled with the uh, geometry, um, you know, your life will be, will be much easier if this is just a pond no or, or circular footings. But now you have a rectangular footing, which means uh, to, 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 to define a rectang rectangle, you need like a, a, a two-dimensional already length and width rather than just the diameters of, for, for being a circle. So like, you know, you're adding all those like uh, complicated factors uh, in, so you need like uh, more work. So we all, again, we take, a, uh, take advantage of the superpositions. So I, I list out some scenario. So it, we have different scenario. We have different scenario uh, at different locations. Because previously, we just work at the corner. And also, we just work at the center. But now, we are not either at the corner or the center. For example, um, maybe case number two. Case number two would be uh, uh, more straightforward. Um, we are at any point, any point inside the foundation, but this is not corner or the uh, or the uh, foundation, not either like uh, the corner or the uh, or the center. So if it's a sand, if you're center, right? just like the concept when we are the center, right? So we chop this out 
on the four parts. So this will be equals to four times one of the small part of it. So this is what happens when we look at the case at the center. But now we, we are even not like at the center anymore. So any point of this, this will be, so case two will be inside the footing. But not at center or corner. So what we will do is pretty much like uh, we will divide this into four parts. Using superpositions. So each of the each of them you will have a new M's and new N's, right? With uh, so this will be the M and N uh, dimensions right there. So each of them you will have these M and N dimensions, and then we'll give you like uh, I values, and then you add up all of them. So the I will be equals to I one plus I two plus I3 plus I4. So case number one. So like, uh, so this case two, I think is still like a manageable. So case two will be the case that being one dimensions. Outside the footing. Which means like, um, you know, Along this directions is outside the, the, the footing, but along this directions, you are still like you know within the dimensions within the footings. So for case like this, what you will do is uh you will find out with i values that cover the footings. So this is your I1. So you know your M and N again. And this will be equal to subtract this part. This will be I2. And this will be I3. So those are the super positions like a concept that we use. So the third case will be like a both dimensions are outside of footing. So with, with, with the two dimensions are both are outside of footings, then using superpositions, how would you find out the I values? So that's the questions. And I only list out, list out three cases over there when you go to practice. Okay, so let me work on case number three. So this this will be the interest, this will be the interesting one. So you have our I values now like at both M and N that are outside the foundations. So what you would do is like a First, so this will be equals to first, like you draw the whole thing again. So you need to find out this I1. And it will be equals to this one, subtract this part. I2. And then subtract this part I3. And you realize this small part here, you subtract it two times. Because you subtract it one times here, and also you subtract the other times here. So you have subtract this two times. So this time you need to add it back one times. I4. So with that, then you should able to find out the uh uh the the total I.